Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours call. I am your host, Jinx. And as always, we are joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. We have got uh, a lot to cover today, I think. Uh, there's been a lot going on over the last week. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Fred. All right, I will start off with all the Grove updates. I'll work through Shannon path and then just general portal things, uh, network things. So uh, kicking off with Shannon, um, the features that are in flight are a lot of carryover from last week. Uh, those include app transfer, minimum staking, proportional rewards, and difficulty hash calculations. Um, so all of that is still ongoing. Uh, there's some investigation of some minor bugs uh, that were found during testing. And uh, also, the uh, one of the main pieces of testing for the new protocol is moving from AppGate server, which was a pseudo gateway developed for testing, to use Path instead. Um, so that's a that's a big big piece of what's going on right now with protocol and Shannon. Uh, moving down the list, um, Path development is continuing this week with a focus still on embedded QoS. The design has been finalized, and the the architecture has been finalized there. And uh, we'll start with the implementation and the reviews and hopefully wrap that up this week. Um, so that is the goal for PATH. Uh, in addition, we're doing a lot of infrastructure work internally for PATH to make sure that we have a stable internal environment and doing a lot of the preparation for us to cut over from our existing portal to PATH. Uh, lastly, uh, just on the portal, we've been doing a lot of different things. Uh, a lot of it has to do with just keeping the lights on and, and keeping the number of relays flowing through into the network. Um, there's been definitely some network instability this week on several chains, and we've had probably between this week and last week some of our busiest weeks with support tickets and chasing down node runners. So um, that's been a major focus. Uh, also, I will call out that there is a chain halt currently on Morse test net, um, which is being worked and resolved. Uh, that is it from Grove's end. Okay. Questions about that? I have a question real quick. Um, I know where the Shannon testnet is. Are there docs for the uh, Morse testnet? I don't know of where they would be offhand. Um, I believe that this was being maintained by the community up until very recently, or continues to be. But I don't know where any docs specific uh, to the Morse test net are. If somebody does have a link for that, please feel free to post it back. Sorry, what's the problem solved? The chain hold? Uh, I don't believe that the chain hold has been resolved right now. Got it. Any other questions about that? Okay, sounds like we're good on that front. In that case, uh, we'll open up uh, to the uh, discussion portion of the hour. Uh, I'm going to let Art kick it off since uh, he's got something to bring up. All right, cool. Hey, guys uh, and girls. So um, we've been talking about chain instability for many weeks now, if not months. Uh, we've had quite a bunch of customers that have reached out to us in the last few days. Uh, yesterday was a very interesting Sure. It's a very bad day. A bunch of chains started shitting the bed, um, more so than they have. So um, one of the things that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time is to create a safety net. I think I've mentioned it in one of the previous ecosystem calls, where there is a guaranteed set of chains that are always available to make sure that there is some mod modicum of stability in the network. Um, and this is one of the things that... Um, costs quite a bit of money to get up uh, up and running um, and 
you know, given that growth has always been kind of in a survival mode, it's been very hard to do it ourselves. Um, so we've been piecemeal and doing it as as we but as we have had the ability to do so. Uh, but in discussions with Mike um, the other day, uh, and especially last night, um, he basically gave us the green light to move forward with a plan we've been wanting to do for a while. So Fred and I quickly put it together, and I would say you know a lot of credit here goes to Fred as well on well, for us you know to think through how we should approach this. But basically, the idea here is that. We would like to, that Grove specifically would like to move send, uh, its traffic uh, to send it to a set of full, fully featured chains. So these would be archival only chains with trace capabilities turned on. And so, you know, the largest type of Solana setup that we can, um, we can support as well. So that'd be six or seven or eight epochs. I'm not sure yet. We can, we can figure that out in the next week or so. And um, do that over the next... Um, progressively over the next couple of months. So what we are proposing on doing is um, opening up an RFP to allow the existing node runners to provide us um, with the uh, their best offer to run, let's say an, uh, a ZK sync node or an Ethereum node um, and so on and so forth for about 30 to 40 chains in the most beefed up configuration that you can provide us. Um, and then Grove will facilitate this on behalf of the foundation. We will pay you all in you in stables, and Grove will then just and PNF will just pay us back for doing you know doing all of this. Will be one for one. There's no like extra fee on top. It's just we're facilitating it so that we can guarantee that there is at least one node runner running at least one or two of these nodes in the somewhere in the world, so that when we go back to our customers, we can be certain that you know there is stability on the network for chains um so the idea is to create a bunch of new chain ids in the process as well we're calling them the f chains or the full functional chains so this would be f001 and so on um so and from there the idea is that as these chains come online um as we get rfps submitted approved and funded and the chains come online we will provision new F chains. Uh, I don't know if it'll be daily or weekly or just at, on November. It just depends how fast all of this happens. And we will begin diverting all of our traffic to those F chains. So initially, we will be that those will be the people who have stood up those chains. And then as other folks come online and stand up nodes, if they want to, they'll be able to partake in this traffic as well. The idea is to, at least from Grove's side, to move the traffic to more uh, 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 to more stable, stable full functional chains because our customers are basically telling us they want more than we are offering. The way they have perceived us is as a insurance and as a backup plan because we are cheap, but we are the actual traffic is uh, the actual service is inconsistent for some chains, the ones that are not as well supported and. We would like to kind of break that narrative because that narrative isn't allowing us to win any new deals at this point. And it's, it's, it's hard to hold on to certain deals when Sui and Scroll and Kava and Kaya and all these other chains start randomly dying. Um, so that's, I think, that, that's basically how we're approaching this. There are some other things that we are considering doing, and this will require further discussion. But um, I'm, I, I don't know if it's worth mentioning now. Fred, I'll pass it to you to see if I missed anything or if you want to bring up those carrot and stick things that we've talked about. Yeah, I'll mention a couple things. So with the move to these full-featured chains, um, I, or we, we would really let... Or what we're planning on right now, pending no further changes, is we are going to deprovision the non-F chains at some point. And... I will also comment that with the F chains, our approach to quality of service will be extremely aggressive, uh, meaning we will be much more eager to leverage our permanent banning capabilities from our gateway. Um, the, the standard for quality needs to be excessively high. Uh, we offer an SLA of 99.95% .95 uptime. We'd really like to push that to four nines for uptime, and then we would really like to expand our SLAs to cover success rate. And if the nodes are not performing and are not able to keep up, then that affects and hampers that success rate, which is what our customers actually care about. So we will be extremely aggressive in the approach to quality of service from our gateway standpoint. 
Um, and we would like to use this as an opportunity to really um, ensure quality at an extremely high level for the new chains and remove the old chains. Some other things that can be done, but this is up to Mike, exclusively up to Mike, and you know there can be discussions down the road, is to increase adoption for these chains when Morse testnet is fixed. Um, the RTTM values for the new F chains could be increased to be higher, so it incentivizes node runners to um, run these configurations um, because PNF and nor Grove nor Porters wants to pay. Right now, putting Porters in here because Porters currently pays for Tyco and Grove currently pays for three or four nodes, and we'll continue paying for those because we have deals for them. We don't always want to continue paying, right? We want to have decentralization, but we we need to right now and i don't like using this word but i need to say it because this is basically what it is is like basically pseudo centralize the supply side for a very short period of time to be able to stabilize the network because what we have been doing historically is adding new chains in in full node configurations and that is not what customers are wanting when they're coming to us and then talking to some of the other gateways they don't feel comfortable sending their traffic because the the chains that do exist and uh, the archival configurations are not well supported. Not all of them, but some of them. So I think a good metric, and um, Fred had brought this up earlier, a good metric here would be for Grove to fall down lower. On, and not you know Right now, we're about half the network because we've lost some customers due to the instability. But for us to fall much lower in the list of gateways who bring in the most traffic because there are other gateways here that are proactively selling and are doing billions of relays per day, but they're not settling that traffic on Grove. And if we are able to provide this safety net that is backstopped by PNF funds uh, for the next three, six, nine, 12 months, however long it takes, um, we will be able to, we should see that these other gateways and future gateways that are coming online should be able to feel comfortable sending most or all of their traffic here because they proactively are looking out for customers, right? We are slowly going to be pivoting into more of this lab style work and continuing building for pocket network. And, you know, path will be the thing that we're going to be vendoring and spending most of our time on. So we will be having, we will have our own set of customers, but we are not actively selling to new ones. Um, yeah. I'll add a little bit of color and kind of restate what Art just said. So I think the best heuristic for the health of the network is a steady increase of gateways and gateways providing traffic to the network. And if we look over the last 90 days, there have certainly been more gateways, but there has been considerably less traffic. And our goal is to restate the supply side of the network in a way such that gateways feel much more comfortable settling all of their traffic on the pocket network thus boosting the core metric, which is relays on chain. Got a few comments on the uh, side here. Um, Breezy said that uh, for as long as we're considered to be a backup solution, ad adoption will never be possible. And I think we should refrain from deploying any new chains until we can assure the quality of service for the existing ones is up to par or better than our competitors, which has been, you know, a consistent issue. Um, but Ramiro specifically asked on implementation, why do we need new chains? Why not just be more selective in current chains? How does this interact with the RTTM sure. changes announced by Mike? Sure. So the RTTM, I'll start with that. The RTTM changes aren't going live and there are some node runners that have planned their configurations for deployment for October 1st for these RTTM changes to go live since it was telegraphed a few weeks in advance. Those are supposed to build, bring in some stability, but they're not here. And we, I have no idea how long it's going to take the testnet piece to get uh, fixed and to get all this tested and up and running. But we need to backstop it now or we're going to hemorrhage a lot more of our traffic. Um, and I don't want to do that. Right? I haven't wanted to do this for a year. I've been basically bitching about this in one way, shape, or form for a year. Um, and we're here now. Um, regarding uh, new chains. We, okay, so the thesis for Pocket is that the, the traffic, the, that there should be enough nodes and enough availability such that um, it should it become very, a big, big marketplace that should become very cheap to process traffic. So all centralized providers or direct use customers would want to use us because it's just the mo most logical option. However, that narrative has not played out yet, right? We have talked to plenty of centralized providers who 
are still able to host their own nodes and still run it cheaper than what we are charging. The cheaper than the two dollars per million that we are currently charging. We have some providers that pay about that that um, they, that their cost is sixty cents per million requests, like averaged out across all their chains, and they have no interest in offloading traffic to us where they're giving away potentially some stability for some cost savings for those providers who are not in that position yet, right? So the providers who are already cheaper than we are, there's no financial incentive. But for the ones that are not cheaper than we are, they're, they're, they come with the instability headache that, that they've seen from using Grove and Pocket. So they look at us as an insurance policy um, and they look at us as a, you know, intermittent traffic from Grove via Pocket is better than zero traffic from uh, for a given chain. And they tend to only want to do this for the long tail of chains because they have their own internal setups that have been functioning for years um, for Ethereum and Solana and whatever else that they might be using or they have worked out special deals, right? This is what we're seeing from our subset of, you know, 100-ish customers that we had to, to have we talked to, right? We have more than 100 customers, but like we've talked to about 100 people fairly often. Um, so in seeing this, we are still not at a place where this is commoditized enough where the prices are going to go down and where people want feel comfortable giving away, sending their traffic to all the main chains. So we're seeing that our thesis right now, or the value prop right now is a, um, what's it called? An insurance plan or a backup plan for the long tail of chains. Um, Fred and I had a call yesterday with someone who wants to use this to send millions of requests for Metis Archival yesterday, like out of the blue. Like that's not a chain that anyone ever proactively uses us. Then someone else reached out for us asking for um, uh, OpBNB and someone else asked us for Moon River and Osmosis. Like it, this is the type of shit that we, type of calls that we're getting. Like that is where people are finding us. That's how the, at least the the SEO is working out in a favor of pocket in the favor of, of growth. And we're just seeing that if we want to play to where people are today, this is what we need to do. We need to create a backup um, net, or a, a stabilize the network for everything we're currently offering and then reassess over the course of the year when other gateways ha uh, have had enough time to move over the line share of their traffic to the network and see, is this actually worth supporting or not? When we have seven, eight, 10, 12 gateways where the vast majority of them are actually practically selling to other customers because it is their business. Yeah, I'll just echo what Ard's saying and, and just like echo the Metis. Uh, one, we've been passed on in the last two and a half years probably 50 times, maybe 30, 30 to 50 times by various customers because they're like, hey, I see you have this chain. Oh, but it's not archival or oh, but it's not trace. Sorry. And then they go somewhere else. And, and we don't want to be in that position. We want to generate demand and boost the number of relays on the network. Thoughts, questions, and see a bunch of chat happening. Do you want to make that conversation so it gets into the video? Sure. Uh, Ramiro asked, why do we need new chain IDs? I think the reason here is that we need to reset and restate the expectations. Um, in the past, when we have changed the specification on Grove's documents and gateway, uh, that hasn't seen the proper adoption. And at the same rate, like we haven't been always equipped to do all of the QoS work up front, and it takes time and it lags, but the customer need is immediate. So um, I am deeply in favor of relaunching all the new or all the chains on new IDs. This also forces uh, node runners to make a conscious effort to restake to these new chain IDs. And if they do so, we'll have a new uh, set of eyes when we talk about quality of service. Um, Weeb3 Capital asked, don't at least some gateways make upfront revenue through new chain launches? The answer is yes. Uh, that has been confirmed and executed by at least two gateways, Grove ourselves, and Porters have uh, revenue streams through launching new chains on Pocket Network. Um, this has been an issue, though, uh, which I covered at uh, the Pocket State of the Union in 2021. This is a one-time revenue stream. It is not a recurring revenue stream, and it doesn't really help 
the network uh, unless you see considerable adoption on those chains. And a lot of the times, even with paid chains, the chains themselves don't route enough traffic to the pocket network to make it really worthwhile and a sustainable line of business. Um, Lowell yeah. asked, what are the archival chains that have had issues? Uh, just this week, Celestia, Sui, Solana mm-hmm. Custom, and Pocket. And I am missing a couple because I'm trying to scroll through our support tickets. But I, I think it's pretty embarrassing that we can't even keep our own chain up and, and serve quality relays on it. Um, I think that is just like, that's the canary in the coal mine for me, that like pocket network archival support isn't even working. And it's extremely jarring as an experience from an end user who's just a, you know, a regular user who's using the pocket wallet. And they log into the pocket wallet to check their balance and, oh, I have zero balance. Did I get hacked? Did, I, did someone steal my credentials? Like, should I be, you know, calling LifeLock and making sure that my credit cards are locked down? Or, you know, is Pocket just broken and, and messed up and, you know, maybe I just need to check out the environment entirely. So, um, yeah, we, we need to do better. So it's Celestia, Solana, and Pocket, you say, right? Uh, Sui as well has had issues this week. I'm, I, can, I can list more if we want to go down that route, but I, I don't think that this is the issue. Like, it is a general rule that the quality of service is not good. Um, most of the chains, or I'll say not most, but half the chains on the network have a success rate below 99%. Any Web2 SaaS platform in 2024 offers an uptime and you know, usability rate of four nines. And that is just, it's just beyond the acceptable rating, especially when we talk about scale, 99% when you're talking about 300 million daily relays means that 3 million relays failed that day. That is a huge number. And that only grows as we scale. And the number of nines that we provide for both uptime and success rate needs to expand as we get more relays. Solana Custom itself has a success rate of 82% last month. Would you, use, would you try to drive your car every day if it only started 82% of the time? Would you use a bare metal provider that only worked 82% of the time? Definitely not. Now you know why customers are leaving and they're taking their relays with them elsewhere. Right. This has been the, you know, this is why, like, you know, when we were, you know, in the, in the crosshairs about like, why isn't growth growing more relays? Well, we couldn't invest any money into this, right? We are able to do this now a little more because we have less of a burn because we've made a bunch of changes internally. And now we can actually support some more of these ourselves, but also PNF can help backstop this. Like our focus as these two organizations, given that Mike and Fred and I and Olshansky are beating all of these things together is stabilize the network um get the you know mike's mike's goal mike's one chart right the way he's looking at the world is like how to stabilize and get the token price up right uh and all the different initiatives around that between exchange loss uh, exchange launches um um and um all the uh evangelism that he's doing and for us it's stabilizing the network so we can build continue building and giving out path, which I think Fred says should be out, a version of it should be out at the end of the month, um, or another version, the next version. And for us to be able to continue um, having really good data, right? Like for us, the revenue that we make is a, is a good proxy for network stability. If we make less money, it's be, for the most part, is a sign that the network is unstable. And that's basically where we've seen the attrition come from. It's like, hey, we pull traffic from chain X or chain Y or from Grove entirely because you guys were just not good enough. Um, but, and that, that's kind of how we're looking at this. It's like, we've heard enough of this over the last year where we're like, okay, now we're at a point where all the people are in the right place. The funds are available. Let's just kind of restart or jumpstart the network again, where we can say, Hey, we have four, four years of lessons learned running, you know, r- jumping a new chain, having a, a full node configuration and an archival configuration and potentially some one-off other setup hasn't really worked in our favor, um, given where the protocol economics currently are. So let's just adjust it such that we know for peace of mind that there is stability that's being paid for for the next 
period of, you know, some period of time, let's call it six months for now. I don't know how long this will last. Um, yeah. Are, are there any, I guess for me here, right? There's a bunch of node runners on the call. Um, and some of you, we already pay. And for that, I had already mentioned message one or two of you. For those of you who we haven't been paying for certain nodes, like you will begin getting paid for it soon. Um, because we already have a deal in place or probably had some version of a deal in place recently. Um, so we'll get that squared up soon. But are, is there any feedback on why you would not want us to do this? I mean, I'm talking about like out loud, not like just typing up. Like, can you give us some reasons why we, Fred and I, may not be approaching this, uh, or thinking about this the right way? Because we are fairly convinced this is the right approach at this point, given everything that we've seen and learned over the last few years. Lowell's asking me for success rates on chains. Let me see if I have a recent spreadsheet that I can pull up, and I am more than happy to show it on screen. Give me one second. That's going to be it. No. All right, it is October, but this is the last time we ran success rate. Um, actually, let me see if I have a better one. Breezy said, I've been quite vocal about this. I think this is the only way forward. I've heard a number of node runners say the same thing, uh, you know, that um, USD or USDC based subsidization of some of these chains is um, the right approach for stabilization. I can re pull a fresh poll of the success rates, but here I'll share this for a second. <laughs> This was in July of 2024, and you can see the cutoff. If we have 59 chains at the time, I'll call it 58 because we deprecated OKC right through that. Um, the only ones that are even above 99% is 19 of them. So less than half are even above 99%. And in reality, only like one or two of them are in a truly acceptable range. And here I can zoom in a couple times. So we see that these two are in the 99.9, .9, so they're good. And then you go down, and after the top 20 chains even, you're below 99%, which is really not good when you talk about hundreds of millions of relays. And Ramirez, it's, it'd be great to have that data in pocket scan. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've defined success rate, and uh, yeah, it would be good to have it in pocket scan, but I think it, it can't just be a growth thing. It has to be contributed from multiple contributors, and it is something that we want to bake into some of the integrations and path in the future. But yeah, that's, that's just a brief look. So one thing I just want to say, just to make it abundantly clear, and I said it earlier, one of my uh, one of my explanations is there is that there is a narrative for pocket network, right? The narrative is still the same. It's just where are we in getting to there? And we are not as far as along as I would like for us to think that we have been, right? I don't want to kid myself. I have I have said this a few times in the last two or three months on these calls that pocket network is operating like a beta, and we are in a position now where. Everyone is focused on this. We are no longer focused on governance, right, or market, ineffective marketing. We are focused on getting the tech actually working. At least that's what Grove is really, really focused on. And we are acting like a true labs team to get all of this fixed and addressed. Um, so seeing as we haven't reached the ultimate state yet, the subsidization is needed. And I, yes, Breezy has told me the same because I've told him the same separately. We basically came to the same conclusion a while back and others have mentioned it. So this shouldn't affect how people perceive the, you know, the long-term narrative. This is just where we are in the progressive stage of getting to um, the, the, the point where subsidies can be removed because we are seeing with things like ETH archival, you don't, I don't think you really need a subsidy. It exists. I think it's decently well supported. Um, but for other chains, it's not because the traffic just isn't there because the natural adoption just isn't there by the world. So the question is, do we want to backstop a bunch of smaller chains, like the esoteric long tail of chains, 
or do we just want to follow the crowd? And for the moment, the decision that we've made is given how our customers are using us or would like to use us or like to send us, they, the supporting esoteric chains for now is going to be a value add for Pocket as a whole. Long term, I don't know what the case is, but I can't see that far out right now. I can only see what, I, what our customers are telling us, which is give us these esoteric chains in their full-fledged configuration, and we are happy to pay for it and we're happy to send you more traffic, right? And I'm assuming the same will be true for the other gateways. I know Eugene from ChainStack has basically telegraphed that in many different venues over the last couple months as well. Art said he's wrapped up there. Anybody have additional questions, thoughts, concerns? Is there anything that hasn't been covered? Okay, so if there's no questions or anything, next steps are Fred will, uh, Fred or I, or probably most likely Fred, will put together the RFP. We'll share it out in a few different venues. We'll give it a few days, um, and we'll, we'll go from there and start having new, new chain IDs allowed listed. And we'll telegraph every step of the way when we ourselves are going to begin moving traffic over. Um, we have some dates in mind, but I don't want to commit ourselves to certain dates for the moment until we see how this, this is going, uh, how, how, how the procurement of these nodes is going to, be, is going to work. Um, we also need to figure out what the best set of chain configurations are. And I think for that, we'll probably be having conversations with all of you or in the RFP Google form, we'll probably he'll ask you to write down what you think the configuration is and what it, what the cost is and what, what you're going to, what this is going to provide us and maybe use that as a litmus test to start. Um, I'll restate that a different way. We'll be providing a spec of the API that we expect to be supported. And then Perfect. we'll leave the hardware configurations and anything else up to you all. And uh, the RFP process will take the, the best and cheapest offer. Best, fastest, cheapest offer has always been our approach. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions about that, uh, I assume that y'all will follow up with further information as it's available. Do we have a centralized location for discussing this in the Discord currently? Would you like to make a new channel for us? I can certainly do that. What would we uh, want to call that? I don't know. F chains, full chain, full no, uh, full functional chains. Fred, do you have something in mind? No, that, that's fine. Um, yeah, let's do like full chain support, something like that. Okay. Jinx, you have creative freedom here. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't want to give me too much creative freedom. All right, I'll get that set up this afternoon. Uh, once you're done with the call here. Uh, any other topics of uh, conversation that we need to discuss today? Happy to give you all uh, a little bit of your time back if you like. All right. Well, in that case, we'll wrap it there. And I uh, appreciate y'all coming. And we will see you same time, same channel next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jinx. Yep. Thank you.